everybody. Um, I'm Maggie, and I'm an engineer at BuildBuddy. Today, I'm excited to present a BuildBuddy product called Remote Basil. Most of us are familiar with remote cache and remote execution, which are orchestrated by a Bazel server running locally on a machine. And the Bazel command runs locally as well. With remote Bazel, we run this Bazel server and execute the Bazel command on a remote runner. So now, the local machine is only in charge of dispatching the remote run, and 100% of the execution occurs remotely. You can think of it as spinning up a VM for the duration of a single Bazel command. This means that technically, you don't even need Bazel installed on your local machine anymore. So at this point, I'm sure some of you are thinking, OK, sounds interesting. But how, and most importantly, why? We originally built this technology to make Bazel builds on CI run faster. Some of you may have seen my BazelCon talk from last year, so this first part will be recap. The first time that Bazel runs on a machine, it has to do some setup, um, like creating the build graph in what's called the analysis phase. From this sample build, you can see that the analysis phase takes 40% of the total build time. Especially on mostly cached builds, like the type that often happen on CI, analysis can take a large percentage of the total build time. And unfortunately, preserving the work from the analysis phase can be tricky because the build graph is completely in memory. So if one CI runner um, initializes the Bazel workspace and a future CI run comes in, that CI run will have to redo all of that redundant work from scratch. One of the biggest benefits of remote Bazel is that we reuse Bazel workspaces between runs. So if one CI runner warms up a Bazel workspace, a future CI run can reuse that warm workspace and not have to redo that slow, redundant work. On Linux and with Firecracker, we store these workspaces in a remote cache. So incoming CI workloads don't have to wait for a workspace to open up. We can dynamically spin up a warm workspace and with auto-scaling. Remote Bazel also helps decrease network latency. Bazel's remote APIs make a lot of sequential network requests. Um, network latency ends up being one of the biggest bottlenecks in a lot of remote cache and RBE setups. With remote Bazel, we're now co-locating the Bazel server in the same data center as our remote cache and execution servers. So now we can see sub-millisecond round trip times, which makes the overall builds faster. When we implemented these changes, we saw an 8x reduction in the median duration of our CI versus using GitHub runners. And before we had an optimized uh, setup, we were still using remote cache and RBE, and we were still able to see this significant of a performance improvement. From this graph, you can see that before, our average CI build took about four minutes, which isn't bad, but that's definitely enough time for me to get distracted and go on my phone. So if I'm context switching every time that CI runs, I can easily waste an hour on something that should take a couple minutes. Now that our CI runs in 20 seconds, it actually makes me significantly more productive. And if you don't trust our self-reported data, we asked one of our customers who reported that now their builds run six times faster on CI. So their P50 went down from 10 minutes to one minute and 40 seconds. Since last year, one of the biggest improvements is that we wanted to make our CI platform easy to use. You can replace any Bazel build with a BB remote build using our CLI to access remote Bazel. We understand that a lot of companies have legacy CI workflows that would be challenging or difficult to migrate to a new or different CI platform. So we wanted a drop-in option that you could just plop into your pre-existing workflow and still access the performance benefits of our CI platform. You can also use a curl request and it's important to call out that our remote runners can run any block of bash code. It doesn't just have to be a Bazel command. In addition to CI, though, 
Remote Bazel has a lot of great applications for the day-to-day -day of developers. One example is cross-platform development. So sure, Bazel supports this, but let's be honest, it's kind of a pain to set up sometimes, and it's often nicer to just build a target on the same platform that it's meant to run on. Personally, I develop on a Mac, but we have a lot of tests that only run on Linux. So using remote Bazel, I can target a Linux remote runner, and because the remote logs are streamed back to my local machine, it literally feels like the build is happening locally. From the slides, you can see just how easy it is to configure a remote Bazel command. You can even configure a container image. Previously, I would use a VM to do this, and it takes a lot, much, a lot more time to set up a VM. And even worse, I use an IDE, so I prefer to write code on my laptop. And when I was using a VM, I would constantly push and pull changes to GitHub, which got old fast. So with the remote Bazel CLI, we will automatically mirror your local Git state to the remote runner. So if you're iterating on code locally and you have a bunch of code changes and you want those changes to reflect in your remote build, you don't have to worry about it because we'll automatically upload any local diffs to the remote workspace. Um, so the workspaces are synced automatically without you having to manually do anything. Remote Bazel is also a good way to access powerful remote runners. Let's say your machine has limited cores or resources or a slow network. With Remote Bazel, you can easily configure access to a far more powerful remote runner. And more examples of sample developer workflows. You can save money versus running a conventional VM that runs 24-7. It's much more efficient to only spin up and pay for a VM for the exact execution duration that you need it. You can use Remote Bazel to debug flaky tests that only fail on CI or a very specific platform, or to ensure a consistent execution environment between multiple developers debugging the same thing. You can use Remote Bazel to run multiple builds in parallel. So for example, I use this when debugging a flaky test. I might dispatch a remote run with runs per test equals 10,000, and then I can switch to working, something, working on something else on my machine and not have to worry about the builds conflicting. Um, you could even use remote Bazel to run a build from your phone using a curl request. So let's say you're on the go and you get a Slack message and you just want to run a quick sample build. That's now possible. And soon, we want to support verified builds. So you may have certain builds that you only want to occur from trusted machines and not developer laptops, like those in your release pipeline. Remote Bazel would be a good way to do that. Now that a web browser can essentially run a Bazel command, this also lets us build a lot of really cool UI features to solve common customer pain points. A common question of Bazel users is, why did this seemingly unrelated target build? So we added a button that runs a Bazel query from the UI so that you can visualize the dependency graph between two targets. Another common question is, what caused cache misses between these two builds? So we added a button that runs a BB explain which compares the compact execution logs of two builds in order to highlight the root cause of what changed and what it invalidated. Or maybe you have a test invocation and you want to see code coverage. You can now initiate your coverage command directly from the UI. If you're interested in the technical implementation, I recommend my BaselCon talk from last year. I talk about how we use Firecracker and snapshotting to preserve workspaces, and how we use user fault FD and network block devices to capture all disk and memory writes in order to store them in a remote cache. So this lets us clone VMs over the network, making our product very scalable. But that is a very fast overview of a very complicated topic. So if you're interested, I recommend you check out that video, and I included a link on the slides. And as always, we're open core, and all of our code is publicly available on GitHub.
To try it out, you can download the BBCLI and run a remote Bazel build from any public GitHub repo. And for private repos, you'll just have to authorize it on our site ahead of time. But yeah, as you can see, there are so many great applications of remote Bazel. I'm sure many of you have good ideas or feature requests, and I would love to hear them. So please come up and say hi to me or any of the friendly build buddies that are here. And we're hosting a happy hour tonight at 7.30 at the sports page, which is a quick walk away. Thank you for listening. <laughs>